We'll be getting started here in just one minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. Yeah. Gave my life to the game, had my mama concerned. I made a call when she saw when I got a return. Broke my flow down, they still can't describe in the words. And all the work they say they put in, I got it confront them. Put my hood in diamonds so you know how my block did it. Gun. Come with a car fax, you know who I shot with it. Shot with us, you know me and my niggas. Cribs not furnished till a garage get a drop in it. I'm now with nothing for free. They ain't know me then, but they check it now. It's the best player getting drafted in the seventh round. I learned rules from the streets and wrote the lessons down. I know 155,000 weigh like seven pounds. Said I'ma be a legend soon. Shit, I'm a legend now. That's real shit. Said I'ma be a legend soon. I'm a legend now. Yeah, 50,000 in the Troy at the W with some bitches. And every time I score, it's a W for the villains. I'm somewhere in the hood, elbow rubbing with all the dealers. Saying because of you, we ain't been as comfortable in a minute. I beat a lot of charges, this money you got a part in. I'm a boss, so my hoes too bougie for Olive Garden. Huh. Rap circles round niggas, that's my department. Put the block in the The only time a nigga really so famous. And on that note, I think we're gonna we're gonna get into this blessed and tumultuous time that we're in at the moment. Let me uh, go ahead and start. I'll let one, I'll write one more song play. I'll let one more song play. My life. Give me one second, YouTube audience. I'm going to go ahead and send out a quick email to some more people in the uh, Zoom chat, and then we can we can continue on. Whew. All righty. We are on track and ready to go. Sorry about the late start, everybody. What's going on? Welcome to the fifth installment of Meeting of the Minds. I am your host, Morgan Saunders, um, and today is a very interesting uh, meeting of the minds. I, I really just wanted to make this a very open and general topic because there's something, there's something that's a glaring issue that I see repeated and what appears to be a great fear amongst our culture as black people. And that has to do with the recent death of King Von, uh, the recent death of Mo3 from Dallas. And this also has to do with being a butcher recently getting shot. This has to also go back all the way to one of my favorite artists, XXX Tentacion getting shot in broad daylight. And it's just a glaring issue of what appears to be envy and hate. These aren't these aren't things that you can just just look away from or these aren't just things that you know you can live your whole entire life avoiding. These are all issues that are here. I'm here today to at least you know open that dialogue up. Welcome in, sir. Welcome in. Welcome to the meeting of the morning. How you doing? How you doing today? Good. Awesome. Awesome. Now, what you joined today is it's called Meeting of the Minds. This is a very open and general platform where I just wanted to talk about some of the issues that are currently going on in the world. So of course. Where, so sort of where I can get people's opinions and feedback and sort of not only preach it to the world or using this platform, but hopefully open up dialogue for our people and you know, just in everyday life. Yeah. So today I really wanted to go into to unity. This is what this this is what this is all about and how we can go uh, come across and make that happen. Uh, in the news recently, there's been a lot of younger generation artists, influencers, people of somewhat noteworthy status that have passed away due to gun violence, due to gang violence, due to whatever mm -hmm. it may be. And I want to, I, I'm coming here on, on today to really address that 
on why that's happening. Why why does it feel like it's something that's a perpetual repet- thing in our culture? Why is it something mm-hmm. that it, 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 it's something that we, it never feels like it goes away. It's always, all right, well, we're good for now. This is that this person, but who's next? You know, who, who yeah. could be another target? Who could be somebody that, you know, is is the is the next target? It, it could be lit. It could be me. It could be you. It could be anybody who is just well, moving in a in the proper direction. And it seems like they have a target on their back. Well, you see, it's the people that stand up for what they like and what they believe in. Mm-hmm. And some others have disagreements with that. That's why, and some reason, and other reasons, people just feel like they have to do it mm-hmm. to be a person in this world. And there's probably other reasons too to go into depth. You know, maybe revenge or somewhere, a vengeance. Do do you feel that 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 revenge that that envy can be displayed in other ways? Does it have to end with someone's life being taken off this earth? Well. As a young mind, people think that that's the only way, but it definitely it definitely is not. Yeah, it's it's very it's a very sad thing when I when I really think about that because you know a lot of our generation I feel like is very smart and they're very perceptive to what's going on, but you know twenty six year olds getting gunned down in broad daylight that's it's not very smart. That's not so that's that's not the people who preach this lifestyle in whatever they do. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. You know, yeah, so going back to, you know, this lifestyle that of, in this perpetual cycle of Black people getting shot, getting killed, getting, getting taken off this earth by another person who looks just like them is counterproductive to what every, everything that we've strived to do in these last five months since, since Floyd. Since Floyd, we, it, it seems like we've had this giant piece of unity across all different cultures, all different races about, hey, there's, it's time for change. It, it's, we're in 2020. There doesn't need to be any more systematic oppression. We are, we're strong enough to sit and fight for it. And if we're strong enough to sit there and fight for it, we should we should take that in all aspects, not just in oh the cops are killing us, oh we we're getting systematically oppressed, we're being held down by the man. In reality, we're holding ourselves down. In reality, we're not stepping up to the plate. In reality, we're still portraying and trying to live these lifestyles that were pigeonholed into living and if we're really preaching oh we're in 2020 we want change we want this we want that let's start using the resources that we have in front of us in 2020 to make that happen and, you know in a moment of transparency i'm not from the hood i'm not from these places where i felt like i had to just do what i had to do to get to make it out I'm, you know, I'm a suburbs kid. I'm an Ohio kid, first and foremost. And I've seen hard times. I've been through hard times. I'm still going through hard times. But the thought of taking another man's life off this earth is not enough for me to, that, that thought is not powerful enough to overtake me and what I'm trying to bring to the world. Now, I can't speak for another man, but the goal here of today is to, to figure out what this envy is and why we have it so that we can expand and hopefully grow from it because it's just a repetitive cycle that we don't need to keep going down. You know, and again, you know, for the new viewers in the Zoom, for the new viewers on Instagram Live, I'm speaking to all aspects, the King Von situation, XXX Tentacion getting murdered in Florida. Mo3 getting murdered in Dallas, Boozy recently getting shot, Benny the Butcher getting shot, all from gang, viol- gang violence. The ecosystem, the balance is just, it's, it's not right. It's not right. Why, why are we using our envy, our anger, our frustration to take it out on someone that looks just like us? Why are we taking that and being counterproductive of what we want and dethroning the people who could help us get that in position quicker? There's no reason 
to go after these people, pop smoke, people who are living in, breathing in, inspiring whole generations of people to be gunned down and murdered by a friend or old or old rival or whatever. No matter what, no matter what you feel they've done wrong, just we got to start finding other ways. We got to start finding a different way to portray or not even portray, but to just talk and get the, get these aggressions out without having to end our lives. Uh, I'll speak to the, to, uh, you know, recently I've been speaking to a lot more people of the Hispanic community. And if you ask me, I feel like when it comes to them, we're more alike than different. And with that being said, I talked to them about how they get a lot of their aggression out. When I was in school, when I had a problem with somebody or another another kid had another problem with somebody, it was always, oh, we'll go slap box, slap box. Yeah, yeah, slap box me, slap box me. And it seemed like a good way to get out of aggression, but it was something that always went too far. If someone gets slapped in the face too hard, they try to come back harder. Someone gets hit the wrong way. Now it turns into an all-out altercation, and it could, it could go out further than what it needs to be. And when I speak to the Hispanic community and they talk about their experiences, of such times like that, I think to myself, okay, how, what do you guys do to take out this aggression or these, or these mini scuffles so they don't have to go further? And they, they told me about a thing called body where they will go 30 seconds, nothing but body blows, nothing below the waist, nothing above the chest, 30 seconds, close, close combat body blows. And, you know, that, that, that can mess you up. You know what I'm saying? I can take the wind out of you. But what you see from that, at least you look at that situation, then you look at the whole community as a, cert, as, a, as, a, as a whole, they're very unified at the end of the day. We are not. And if the slap box and metaphor can at least draw, that, draw those lines that I'm, that I'm trying to paint here, is that why with us, is there escalation against someone who looks just like us? Is it someone who at least is, maybe they're not trying to, you know, make, be this shining impact in the world, but they're here to, you know, just to, to just provide something, you know, provide something to the, to the world. And there's, we're just going to take them off the earth for that. No, no, we need, we need unity within us. We need, we need to sit down and, and stop, like really assess what's going on. Gang culture, everyday, everyday humans, you know, the nine to five workers, we, we really need to sit down and observe how we not only portray ourselves to the world in the message that we give off, but we gotta, we gotta make sure that we got we got to make sure that we're not we're not we're not we're not backpedaling you know what i'm saying we're not we're not doing anything just to escalate our situation we're doing things to progress our situation when i when i think about when i think about the king von situation uh and i wasn't the biggest fan of him but my but my story with him is i i heard his name i i knew of said rapper and it was just oh he's just another he's just another drill rapper out, um, and then I saw an interview with him and DJ Academics, and it was it was a really eye opening interview. Uh, it was it was like I was meeting a, a like a, a very polar opposite guy of what was being preached, you know, in his music, you know, this drill rapper. But he he seemed like he had a good head on his shoulders. He seemed like he, you know, he made mistakes. He's still he's still in those battles, but he's in those battles for a reason. He's in those battles to, to teach the youngers how to how to move in this environment. And you know that was that was deep. That was that was deep. But then, uh, literally one day later, he gets shot. He's dead. He's gone. And you know the testaments I hear from the people who really connected with his music, who were really living with his music, is deep. And then the video leaked of how he actually got shot. And again, going back to this whole entire 
body versus slap box comparison I'm trying to draw here. They were having a normal tussle, a normal fight, but it ended with someone coming from behind him and putting a gun in his head. And I'll be honest, like a lot of a lot of the art and the things I've been portraying over the last, I want to say three weeks, literally this month, has been around this topic. Because at the end of the day, you know, I think I am, I'm, me personally, I'm scared to die. I am. But I'm only scared to die if it's at the hand of another black man. I can care less if it's a, you know, Asian person, if it's a Puerto Rican person, if it's Hispanic, whoever. But I'm really scared to die in the hand of a black man. And as I as I pondered on that, it's, it's because that person who is so willing to take my life, I could be in their shoes. And that's a very eerie feeling for me. I just, I, I couldn't, I, I still don't understand the purpose of taking out another black man when we got other people targeting us already. There's street shit, there's 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 all these underlying factors that we that we put judgment on and we put weight on, but at the end of the day, it, it, none of that matters in a bigger fight. None of that matters. Why if if we're thinking about this as a world war between every other culture, why are we the only platoon self-destructing our own our own uh generals our own uh our own our own privates our own our, just our own units why are we self why are we only want self-destructing our own units I, have a con- I had a conversation with a man a few months back, I think around me and months too. I was in Santa Monica and he was, he was, we were talking and I, it was at random too. I was just, I was just walking around Santa Monica and I had stopped and sat down and I, you know, they told me they were from Atlanta and they just came out there for the weekend. It was all cool and dandy. And I told them what I was doing with meeting of the minds. And, you know, one of them, I believe his name was John. I forget his last name, but John, it came up to me with such passion. Cause he was like, I'm so glad to see another young brother taking the initiative to at least start these conversations. And I said, thank you. You know, he kept, he was giving me a lot of his personal story and it was very inspiring. And what our conversation ended up ending on was me asking him, how do we stop gentrification? And he said, you know what? I'm going to think on that. And one day I'm going to come back to you, but I'm going to leave a question for you. Why do our young kings and why do our young kings and our younger generation keep murdering each other? Why is there so much hate being spewed from the younger generation? And it's something that, and when he told me that, it was something that's always been on the back of my mind, but it was never something that I, I've ever been asked to answer. And I guess this is what this me of the mind essentially is. I wanted to open up this topic. I really wanted to dive into this topic. So as I look into the chat on a, on, on, a, on, on Zoom, I said, we got, it's been happening since slavery. I agree. It has, you know, we, we were pinned up against each other by slave masters. You know, we, 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 we were killing each other to survive on the way over here. And Is is some deep psychological in ingrainment within the culture, but I feel like the 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 necessity, the 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 this thing that we can snip to cut a lot of the bullshit 
is the maturity level in opening up a conversation or the ability to stop and really just assess how 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 uh, how we are, how, how we present and how we present ourselves and that's and that's and that's been the, the recurring thing for me because envy can only be brought up by the light that someone else gives off and they in that light makes another person feel diminished and it's it's something that's wallowing within them at that point and for the person that's giving off this envy to people around them they only really only have two choices to nip it in the bud and make them seem uh human as possible or navigate around it envy is inevitable with black people it feels like we envy the human now uh i would have said probably 10 then 20 years ago 30 years ago technically in the 90s i would have said envy would have been more of oh they got more power or they got this popping off well shit i want to get i i can't i can't do that but fuck it i'm gonna I'm try to do that because now i need to come up and then everybody will be looking at me nowadays you know, these cats are rolling over in, in Bentleys and, and, and designer shoes, $1,000 shoes and shit, and still shooting each other. So if it's not for the material things, it's really about this person's spirit. And we can't, we got to, we got to snap out of that. We got to present ourselves better than that. Because in the, the day, we all are kings and queens, whether you know it or not, whether you want to recognize that or not, whether you want to moving your own light that is given to you when you walk this earth everyone has that light and we can't fault our envy our hate to over over overtake that am i missing anything else It's probably not gonna load. I had a whole talking point list. Actually, I'll continue. I'm gonna continue with Instagram. It's been a pleasure. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, yeah, this is just this is just merely something I wanted to get off my chest. This is something that I've been seeing in the news, and this is something that I, I just feel like really needs to be addressed and really needs to have a sit down conversation about. Um, if you weren't in here originally, or you weren't in here the full time, please comment in the comment section. Talk to me. Let's, let's start open dialogue about this. Share this to a friend. Let's, let's open up the door. You know, let's really, let's, let's, let's wipe away the bullshit. Let's talk about what it really is and what we got, what we got to do going forward to rewire ourselves. Uh, I want to dive in a little bit deeper to Black Lives Matter then. So we've been, we've been on, Black Lives Matter has been around for a while, but it really blew up back after the George Floyd, T, uh, Breonna Taylor incidents. And I feel like it's been great. It has slowed down. It's died off right now. People have forgotten about it. This, you know, on to the next, but it's still, it's still in the ingrained with us now. It's still something that we, we use like a hashtag. We use an everyday, everyday basis. And I, I want to just, I want to go about saying that if you are preaching Black Lives Matter, if you 
value the cause, if you value what we're trying, what what the movement is, what the movement is going to be for our culture, you also have to stand on not dethroning the people we have in power positions because all it's going to do is cause us to be two steps back. You're just going to knock the dom- dominoes over right after we just built our tower of Pisa out of nothing, you know? And if, if there's any, it, it, there really isn't even anything to expect. You know, I'm, I'm not expecting, you, you know, the streets to be, you know what? We don't need to beef no more because there's, in, there's intangibles, you know, the gangs were initially brought in to protect our neighborhoods. What they've morphed into is what they've morphed into over time. But if someone is going against the neighborhood and they are our color, hey, you know, that's that's your morals, that's your code. But let's stop again, let's stop for a second and let's really assess it's taking another black man's life, another black woman's life, another black child's life going to progress anything that us are trying to move forward. Not your, not your, not your set, not your, not your friends, not your, not your family, our culture, the black culture. What is that going to, is that, is that action going to push us forward? Is that action going to enlighten us? No, no, it's, it's, it's counterproductive. We got to step it up. We got to, we, we have to change outlook because another, you know, in adding on to that, right. Saying black lives matter, but turn around and kill another black man. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, that's not going to dominoes over our, our culture, send us back, yada, yada, yada. But what does that say to people who aren't black? What does that say to people who are observers of us? What does that say? What does that preach? It preaches dysfunction. It preaches un- not an organization, but unethicalness. That we that we're still primitive. That we haven't learned to you know as as plainly as this step up. We haven't le- we we just we're stuck. And there is no, there's no, there's no need for that. There's no need that if we're, we're in 2020, you can open your phone and find somebody that's all the way across the world, connect with them. And now you have a mentor. Now you have someone who isn't in your everyday, you know, situation, but can give you some sort of insight and wisdom to say, you know what, maybe I don't have to center myself in these situations in this life. I, I I can, you know, I can go to Europe for for a year. Let me just save up my money. Let me stay out of all this bullshit. Save up my money. Go to Europe for a year. Get some life experience. You know, granted it's COVID. You see my mask right there. You can't, you know, but that that's the mind state that we should have. In. Or you know what, fuck it. I'm with I was, you know, middle middle uh middle America kid. Let me go out to LA. Let me go out to New York. Let me go to Canada, you know, let me, let me, let me change my environment because that's how you grow. It's the fastest way to grow is changing your environment. If you want to be a hermit to the life that you're living, if you, if you, if you, if you want to succumb to the stereotypes of who we are and what, and what, and not who we are, but what we've been portrayed to be, then you're, then you'll stay. But again, it's 2020. We have no excuse to be hermits of our life. You know, if you if you talk to me, I'm telling you in, in five years we're 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 gonna be interstellar interstellar space travel. Five, ten years we're interstellar space travel. And you and with that on your mind, you think that we got time for the the, the nitty gritty games? We got time for the for the salacious and uh sadistic games that that we're playing for shit that won't even matter in two two days two weeks for material things fuck no no 
No, we got to start putting our foot down. We got to start showing up as the kings and queens that we really are. Period. There's, there's no more excuses. There's absolutely no more excuses why we, why we should move in the manner of what we are, who we are, even if you don't know who you are. Simple signs of respect. You can dress however you want. Fuck, you know, having dreads and locks and, oh, that's not professional. No, show up. At, I believe you should show up as you. Quarantine has shown me that more than anything. Y'all see me? No fade. No fade. Braids up. Need to be too strand twisted again. But this is only an asset of who I am as an individual. What I bring, what I say, what I want you to take away is what I will. I, I hope to be remembered for. Not the fact that I rolled around, you know, uncut hair, untrimmed, moved out, outside of the way of the normal, of the status quo. No. No. And that's what everyone should be focused on, is what we're bringing to the table what we're, we were just talking about that with the with the dude who came here like 20 minutes ago started you know showing those cock pictures you know what i'm saying like weird shit but hey nigga tried to bring something to the table you know and that's the goal at the end of the day that's the goal is what are we bringing to the table and if what you're bringing to the table is a knife to the back of the person bringing the full course meal we're not going nowhere we're never going to eat. We're never going to enjoy the fruits of our labor. And that's, that's really, that right there, that analogy right there is, is what I want to be taken away from all this. Doesn't matter your streets or suburbs. We got to show up in our higher light as kings and queens. Uh, why does the young generation have so much hate and envy? I still have an answer to that question. That, that broad question of why does the younger generation have such hate and envy for each other? But a solution to the hate and envy is for open communication, Ste stepping up and stepping out of tradition of taking a life because of a material or irrelevant thing. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. If you're just now joining us on the Zoom call, we're having an open conversation about unity in the black community. And we're having a conversation on simply the events of King Von, Mo3, XXX and Tassion, people who've been murdered in cold blood by people of our own community or our, our old hood and how can, and ways that we can open up the, the conversation on hate and envy. Prayers up for Benny the Butcher Mo3, XXX Tentacion, King Von, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Boosie. There was somebody, there was somebody I was just listening to on a podcast that just passed away as well. But anyone who's lost their life, COVID, gun violence, gang violence over the last year, two years, hundred years, prayers up to them and their family. Prayers up to the people who are in this, this war currently going on. Prayers up to the people who are merely spectators of this war and wanting to know how they can help, how they can bring advice, how, how we can start changing the narrative. And I believe that's just simple. These are simply the first steps that we need to take. Um, again, thank you for the Zoom audience. Thank you to the Instagram Live crowd who came out tonight. Um, this is just merely something I, I really need to get off my chest. This is something that I, I really wanted to present to the world. This is something that I feel like just needed to be talked about in a different space. It's been talked about in the music. It's been, you know, ex exaggerated in the music. And it's been talked about on these podcasts. But I, I just really wanted to have a blunt and just vulnerable and honest conversation to, to spark some spark spark some flies spark just to spark some uh so, yeah spark some flies so my camera just died but I got another battery for the sign off.
I appreciate the patience. I appreciate the patience, uh, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom audience. But we're back. 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 Um, before I sign off, I wanted to take a quick detour on a few things that we have going on here. Now, if you missed any of our meeting in the mines, uh, th again, this is our fifth installment. All the meat in the minds can be found here on Realism TV. Please go subscribe to Realism TV. This is my content hub channel. It's a whole bunch of random videos, but most importantly, this is where I'm hosting a lot of the meat in the minds content. Everything from our very first one to our promo clips are all can all be found here. Uh, we are still indeed moving forward on the degentrification project project. This project is, is not going away anytime soon. This is, th this is something that I really want to show the step-by-step -step process of. Um, let me see. Yeah, this, this is our last one on perseverance and voting. Little 40 minute clips, please, if you don't mind, just going on, clicking the share button. Boom, send those out. Continue and open the conversations in our comments section. And like and share these videos. But yeah, again, to kind of review some things. Uh, yeah, donate to our GoFundMe here. Uh, this is what we're going to use as capital to show off and you and use for the degentrification project. We talked about transfer wise as a secondary secondary source of income, which actually I do want to open up again if my camera were to turn back on. But uh, for a second, for the secondary source of income using transfer wise, I also started using Robinhood and investing in a lot of uh, uh, Bitcoin, and I really like it. I really like it as a as a topic, as an idea, especially since there's a lot of like bubbling bitcoins that i've been getting word that are, that are going to blow here soon so that's just good information i wanted to pass off to you if you're not already on robin hood uh highly suggest that you get on there and yeah we talked about voting process in voting and we opened had open conversation but that just that's just about it and Miss Lady Te Technique, don't even don't even worry. I I I know I know. Look, it's court it's quarantine. We all we all we we all got a hundred thousand things that that we're on right now. So I'm I'm not even faulting you, but I just appreciate your presence now and here whenever you can. So that that this means the world to me, you know. So I'm I'm glad you're a part of this, and hopefully we can continue our conversations. All right. Well, I'm going to cut it here. I want to thank everyone who attended in our Zoom call. I want to take thank everyone who attended our Instagram live uh, session. You know, I even want to thank the guy who came in here and, you know, gave us a little show. But, uh, you know, it's crazy things that happen in this world. I uh, hope you guys all have a blessed night. Get home. Stay home safe. You know, go out if you have to. If you're in LA, please, please be careful. Uh, cases of COVID are rapidly rising. Uh, Lady Tiny, if you like to chime in, please, please feel free. Please feel free. I'm just doing the outro, so please feel free. Hello, Morgan. I'm so sorry I uh, jumped on this like really, really late, but I just wanted to commend you for um, just putting this on. But I, I listened most of the time because I was driving, but I just wanted to speak to, you know, like what you said and some of the things that stood out just like in terms of people talking about Black Lives Matter or it being a dying hashtag, 
I would have to say, like, um, in my community, that's not really true. Like, I feel like since the whole um, uprising of speaking out against social injustices, um, people have been mobilizing boots on the ground um, and taking action within their um, respective community. For instance, uh, my mom, she's an elected official in the North uh, San Fernando Valley. And over the past uh, few months, we've been facilitating those conversations, um, enlisting allies. Now where she is, um, she has to pull in you know, different resources in terms of the whole um, label of Black Lives Matter. She has to be very careful with what she has uh, stated about that um, just because of a poor perception that has come about um, with the whole BLM movement. Um, the bad perception is that, you know, just because you are in support of Black Lives Matter, that means that you are anti-police. That means you are um, for completely defunding the police. Um, I've had to clarify with her um, that that is not true. Um, in fact, I think that's just where the message has been mixed up. Um, so yes, the conversation has been taking place. Um, we had a town hall and um, one of the individuals who participated in the town hall was actually appointed by um, Mayor Garcetti. And um, she uh, is part of the uh, social equity uh, team. Uh, in the city of Los Angeles. So there's actually resources out there for people who feel like, um, you know, action needs to be taken in a certain area. Um, another panel member um, who supported or supports uh, Macy Gray, she um, also um, has a charity the name escapes me. I need, I need my food. Um, but she, um, basically she works with, she works with, um, families of victims of domestic violence. So it was, it was really powerful for us to have those two individuals on the town hall. And then, um, in addition to like working with my mom in the San Fernando Valley and the Santa Clarita Valley, we started, um, or we are starting, um, the first ever, um, NAACP, Oh, wow. chapter never happened before in the history of the founding of this town so that's something that's super um dope and it, it, aside from that what what started that was a facebook group so you know most of the black people who live out here didn't even know that we had black neighbors because we're so spread out people live in the suburbs they're pretty much on their own island but um from a Facebook uh, group uh, came a few events. So um, from those events, there was this drive to um, support or, or to, to start the NAACP. We've also had some other like family gatherings, game nights. So um, the whole piece about, you know, black people like joining and, and banding together I feel like that has to take a few people who care. Um, maybe it may start with a Facebook group. Maybe it starts with maybe a series of Zoom calls such as this. Mm -hmm. um, but more importantly, that conversation, just because the hashtag has stopped trending does not mean that that is not a, a topic of great importance. And I can... Um, honestly say that, you know, we are taking action. Um, even with the whole um, incident with, in Santa Clara, I don't know if you remember seeing it on the news, but there were deputies that had guns pointed at these young, I'm not going to say young men, they were young men, but um, basically teenagers who were skateboarding, they were at a bus stop and they were getting attacked by, uh, I guess he was Hispanic. Um, so he got attacked with, 
they got attacked with by this person with a knife. The kids called the cops and then the cops looked at the kids like they were the issue. So um, that stirred a lot. And um, that's why we are, we also started a social uh, justice committee from the overarching um, black of Santa Clarita Valley. So all to all that to say, like, you know, that's one example of, of how to take action and how, you know, it's so important not only to just jump on the trending hashtag or even go to the said, like, um, uh, demonstrations, the peaceful protests, but it, it, it also requires follow-up and not everybody has been called to serve at that capacity. And it doesn't have to be a million people that serve at that capacity, but just those, those few who, who take the time to, to care and they can be the leaders to help gather and assemble people of like mind. So I just wanted to to jump on there and, and give my little spiel. Um, I can't believe you've had five already. That's crazy. I'm sorry that I missed them, but I'm glad that you are uh, still still doing this. And um, if you haven't done so already, I think you should have a podcast. This definitely should be a podcast. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I was, I've been thinking about making this a podcast. I appreciate your I work. Uh, I, yeah. wanted, I do want to know more information about how this NAACP in the Santa Clarita Valley developed. So please keep me in contact about this. Absolutely. And I mean, it's very easy. If your respective community does not have a local chapter already, um, I would highly encourage, you know, people who are interested to uh, go on the website. Um, but literally, it takes about 100 signatures Mm -hmm. Only a hundred signatures. I believe it's uh, 30, 20 or $30 a person. I paid $45 so, because I uh, signed myself and my son up. And then there's different membership levels. So let's say if you have some business owners or executives that want to be lifetime platinum members, they can drop like they could drop a rack if they so choose um but yes that's where it starts <laughs> at mm -hmm. the grassroots level so um i'll definitely keep you posted as um things develop awesome awesome i appreciate you chiming in lady technique uh and, and i and you know i and i, I do want to make it clear i i did not want to say that I was diminished that the black Lives matter has been diminished but it, it's been more of a a uh, what's what's the word I'm trying to look for? It. Well, it a, was a trending um, topic. You know, everybody jumped on the bandwagon. Yeah, and yeah. now it's like it's not something that people are talking about anymore. But I hope that even though it's not something being discussed, that people, you know, in their respective communities are still taking action in some way, shape, or form because mm -hmm. this is something that needs to continue the conversation does not stop after the hashtag dies mm -hmm. so you know and i'm not going to even say die maybe that's a strong word but after the hashtag stops trending does mean does not mean that the conversation stops if anything it means that you know y'all are either about to do the work you're going to do the work or you're mm -hmm. doing the work Mm -hmm. But, you know, it doesn't, um, nothing happens until, you know, people take action. That's right. Momentum has not stopped going forward. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. All right. Lady Take Me, I, I actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link, I'm gonna link in with you in the next couple of days. I, I want to continue to talk to you more. Absolutely. But, uh, I'm happy to. I'm, all right, awesome. But I'm going to end this uh, Zoom call here. Again, everyone who chimed in, everyone who was a part of this, I appreciate you. We were going to have more and more to come. And yeah, everybody have a blessed night. I hope everyone gets home safely, stays home. I love you all.